What is up you guys? It's Katya Volks. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the second episode of this new series regarding how you should be training. Now, if you haven't seen episode one, go check that out because I will preface this again by saying this is all to be taken with a grain of, of salt. <laughs> that, And what I mean by that is what I'm going to be talking about is very much more a bodybuilding style of training. So if you're doing Olympic lifting or powerlifting, definitely powerlifting, you can implement these kind of tools to help with your um, strength as well. But I'm not saying completely knock all your workouts, but analyze what you're doing now and see how you can better yourself. So in the first video, I talked about time under tension. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about like redundant training and just doing things that really don't make a difference in optimizing your workouts too. And what I mean by optimizing your workouts is you don't want to be in the gym for like two to three hours. By that point, you know, a lot has a lot of like um, muscle fatigue has set in and you're just kind of draining yourself of energy especially. And by that point, it's hard to push yourself. If you're already at the gym for like two hours, you're probably hungry too. And when you condense it, you're able to also burn more calories because you're going faster, you're keeping your heart rate up. There's a lot more benefits to it when you condense your workouts and actually like time your sets and, or time your rests in between sets and such. So we're going to dive into that and I'm going to just do like a voiceover with some workout footage so that you're not just staring at me. Now, say you go on the internet and you look up different bicep exercises. You find 20 different bicep exercises. Does that mean you should go and try every single of those 20 bicep exercises when you go to the gym today? Mm, probably not. <laughs> One, you'll very much fatigue yourself, and two, it's just kind of also a waste of time. I'll be honest. So for me, someone who works full time and I'm studying, and then also does you know the gym and considers that kind of full time because it's something important to me. I know that I want to optimize my workouts as best as possible so that I'm not going from, you know, to, from work to the gym and then home like 10, 11, like that's crazy. My goal is to try to get to home, get home as soon as I can so that I can feel myself. But of course, I'm not just so focused on that because I want to focus on my workout and make sure I get a very good work, solid workout. And that's when also like body splits come into play and that can be for another video if you guys want me to talk about that. But regarding redundant training, yes, you can talk about the spice of life and trying different exercises, but variety can lead to a sense of being overwhelmed and definitely confusion. So it allows a lot of problem, a lot of problems, sorry. And so redundant training occurs when a person overloads or continues to use workouts are movements that are virtually useless for their body. So, for example, with the biceps again, if you know a person finds those 20 effective bicep movements, and time, you know the time and energy that puts into that many movements is useless and also wastes valuable workout time. So, hope that reiterates kind of things I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know, but to be realistic, when people train legs, they are usually thinking of growth. Many people, however, avoid the squat rack or a squat motion, so they look for more isolated movements, you know, like the leg extension or leg curls, you know, with the hopes to grow their legs. And then maybe they do four or five different hamstring movements, five to six quad movements, and a few glute exercises, all while avoiding major movements like, you know, squat or deadlifts. One of the many perks and benefits, though, of like a performing a squat or deadlifts is the complete beat down it puts on the inferior, well, your lower part of the body. So doing varieties of types of squats. One of my current favorite, for example, is the Zercher squat. It's just, it's awesome. Look it up, try it out, I totally recommend it. But yes, when you are developing a workout routine, you wanna find what works for you and not overload and not overthink them on movements because chances are they may cancel each other out too. So there is no need to do 15 bicep movements or 15 leg movements that don't involve squatting. Same as if you're gonna train upper body, you know, that's why they always say, start with a compound movement. So start with the squats, the deadlifts, or the bench, or even like an overhead press, the strength movements, because that utilizes multiple muscle groups. So a good format to go by for isolated 
and split training programs is no fewer than nine sets or no more than 16 sets per muscle group. If you break that up, you're looking about three to four sets per movement. So it's not too bad. So some would say that redundant training is unavoidable, especially if you are trying to find the most effective workouts and movements. The key though with this is to recognize when it's taking place and when and not to stay in that place. <laughs> Sorry. Variety is definitely important, but being particular and not overdoing on your movements will be the best option to make sure redundancy is not a norm in your training. Because instead of killing it, quote unquote, in the gym, you're just gonna be literally killing time. Yeah. So to kind of give you an example of what I've done for myself and switching up my workouts is originally my coach had given me quite a lengthy workout and I was like, this is getting, this is taking too long for me. And I got to also a point where my body just adapted to it because I was doing it for so long, so I had to switch it up. And now my leg days are literally four exercises on my heavy leg days. I do landmine squats with a belt. I do these cable pulls. I'll have to upload one of my leg day workouts. Well, I think in this video I'll probably put my leg day. So you'll see the weird exercises I do mixed with some other random exercises I'm throwing in here. Um, but literally three big exercises and then I just do a burnout with lunges and kind of superset that with really light weighted um, RDLs with dumbbells. So, and that leaves me fried. And it, it's, it's amazing how switching up your workouts or doing supersets or compound sets can help so much. And that's superset, compound sets, that's also another video if you guys want me to talk about that kind of stuff. Before split into body parts and that fun stuff. I don't know how many times I said the word stuff. But yes, if you need help uh, optimizing your workout routine as well, shoot me an email. I'm happy to coach you. I'm offering coaching. Is that what I'm trying to say? I don't know. Um, I'm really, you know, literate when it comes to this stuff. Or right, vocal. I'm great at talking pretty much, as you can tell. But I hope this video was helpful for you guys. And please, if there's anything that I miss or you have still questions, do comment them below. Otherwise, give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button because there's more to come with this series and to learn about training and optimizing workouts and getting your best bang for your buck. Yas, queen. Okay, I don't know. I'm tired. <laughs> I love you guys. You are awesome and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.